Hi, I'm Sarah. I'm the CEO of Dynamic Boards. We advertise all the non-exec director roles in the UK. Uh, today, I'm talking to Colchester Borough Homes. They're looking for a new chair for their board. And with us today, we've got CEO, Philip Sullivan, and one of the board members, Karen Smout. So I just wanted to start off. Um, Philip, can you tell me a bit about what Colchester Borough Homes does? Thanks, Sarah. Um, Colchester Borough Homes, obviously based in Colchester, Essex, we uh, we're, we're an arm's length management organisation, so uh, we are a subsidiary of the council, Colchester Borough Council, and we're responsible for the management of about 7,000 homes. That's split between general needs housing, uh, leasehold properties and older persons accommodation as well. Uh, but we do more than that. So we're also responsible for homelessness for Colchester, um, and that means homelessness prevention and rough sleeping as well. So uh, tackling rough sleeping, which is uh, makes a real impact. So I would say everything we do makes a difference, but rough sleeping, you can see that immediate impact that you're having on individuals' lives. So really important part of what we do. Slightly different as a housing provider, we're also responsible for some of the council's corporate buildings. Uh, so okay. the management and maintenance. So that includes the castle, the town hall, leisure world. So quite a few of the uh, high profile, really important uh, local buildings in Colchester as well. We've got about 220 staff, really good team of staff. Um, so a really good place to work. So very quick overview, but that's Colchester Borough Home, Sarah. And Philip, what's the mission of the organisation? So we've actually just last year now, 2022, we've updated our vision as an organisation. So our new vision is enabling customers, colleagues and communities to thrive. So we created that, we talked to our tenants, leaseholders, board members were absolutely key. We had a working group together, uh, liaised with the council, officers, members, wide range of stakeholders and just established what was really important to them. Mm. So honed in on those three, customers, colleagues and communities. Uh, but what I would say underneath that sits a number of themes, uh, metrics, so key performance indicators, we've got an action plan. So it's not something that just sits on a shelf. First of all, all colleagues know what our vision is Brilliant. and they're working as part of their day-to-day -day work to help us deliver that. So it's an exciting time to be in Colchester with that new vision. Yeah, and you've got, sounds like you've got a really broad mandate as an organisation. I think quite a lot of housing organisations um, purely have so many units that they provide in housing, but actually going into homelessness and managing those other assets, that's incredibly broad. What kind of budget are you looking at? So total budget for us is about, well, last year it was about 16 million pounds. So about 10 million of that was investing in our homes. So capital investment, improvements to the homes, uh, energy efficiency works really important at the moment, uh, but also day-to-day -day repairs, which is really important to our customers. Mm -hmm. The rest of our budgets tend to be uh, staffing budgets and some overheads, premises, that sort of thing. Okay, and there's quite a few different stakeholders you've talked about there. Who's on the board? What's the mix? Of representation that you've got there so we have a, a mixture of board members we have a uh, sort of a third that are councillors from Colchester the city council recently made a city um yeah three councillors from the city council three tenant board members and three to four independent board members i'm one of the independent board members so it, it's really a really interesting yeah. dynamic at board meetings and a really good mix and we get that's one of the ways we get to hear the tenant voice in our board meetings by having those tenants um, on our board and um, I think it can be quite intimidating for them initially but they really do enrich the conversation with that real life stories of what's going on yeah you know, in our social housing lots of organizations talk a good game about listening to their customers but actually when it comes to it their their boards are made up of people that can be quite distant from their customers so that's really amazing to have three tenants around your board um, and are there other ways that you listen to the voices of customers as well? Yeah so uh, we have two away days a year and as part of that the last couple of away days we've done um, stock tours so we've had a little bus tour around Colchester and visited different um, uh, groups of our social housing and, and it's really lovely we get out and about and the, the tenants come out and want to say what are you doing who are you you know so we have a nice chat with them particularly about their gardens, they love their gardens. Oh. So we have uh, an annual garden competition that's one of the privileges of the chair is to judge the garden competition. So that's quite a treat and quite uh, an eye opener as well. Oh, because wow, our tenants it. are very proud of their homes. That's really um, creative. 
Yeah. And we have we have a tenants voice committee as well. So one of our board members, one of our tenant board members is the chair of the tenant voice. And so that's a group of tenants that get together and raise things. And we also have the opportunity at our board meetings for tenants to come along and raise any concerns that they might have. But quite often that is linked to the to that voice um, committee anyway. That's amazing. And, and do you find tenants come and do that? It varies. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes not. But yeah, they've wow. got that opportunity. And, and I think it's about that, um, the tenants committee making that, getting that message out there. So yeah. I think sometimes non-exec directors um, get a bad rap and they sound like people in Ivy Towers that um, are quite very corporate and distant. Um, what you've just described, you know, the bus tours, the garden competition is um, really grassroots. It's really getting down and really knowing what's actually going on in the organisation and getting close close to the we also, we also like to have a spotlight from our um, from the colleagues, our staff as well at the board meeting. So and that's been very valuable as well, that we invite um, people from around the business to come and tell us about their about what they do in their role and where they see the challenges and what they do if they were CEO for a day and that's really been an eye-opener as well. It's brilliant. Well, so we like to try and be friendly and encouraging to anybody to come along and tell us what's going on. So Philip, um, I guess in this new person joining the board as the chair, what values are really important for you? Okay, I mean from our perspective as a board, so our board actually has its, its set of values which is around listening and uh, making sure that they're challenging as well, challenging the exec, but supportive as well is really important. So again, that right balance between challenging and supportive, respect around the ball table. Yeah. Uh, transparency as an organisation and as individuals, I think is really important to the chair or our board members. I mean, our, our values are aligned. You know, the chair and our board members and the exec, uh, they're aligned. But making sure that they're purposeful. You know, we've got an important job to do. Yeah. Um, trustworthy so all of the key qualities that we would want as an organization we would want from the exec the board and the chair as well but for them to be aligned Sarah is really important to us mm -hmm. an interest or, or even better a passion for social housing would be would be a great aspect to have and also recognition that we have quite a complex stakeholder group to manage so we've got councillors some of whom are on the board but some of whom aren't like the councillor holds the portfolio for housing so there's relationships to manage there with with our councillor population but also with the um council executives as well so who are our parent effectively so you've got to be a good stakeholder manager i think in this chair role mm, that's helpful so if someone has a lot of those qualities um, and values that you've described uh, but they haven't been a chair before would they be welcome to apply I think so, yes. It's about having the right skill set that's transferable. And we've had chairs before that have made this uh, step here as a, a chair, first chairing role. So, no, I mean, definitely all are welcome. You know, if they have the right skills and, and competence for the role, we'd welcome an application from them, Sarah. So, you know, they may not have been chair of the board. They may have been a non-exec director stepping up. They might have been a committee chair somewhere. They might be an exec who sat around the board table, but from an exec position, but has that exposure to boards. So really, you know, if someone has the skills, the qualities, the commitment, the passion for Colchester, the passion for social housing, then, you know, we'd welcome an application from them, sorry. Great, and you mentioned passion for Colchester there. Do they need to live in the area and be familiar with the area? So they don't, they don't need to live here, um, Sarah. And I mean, we our meetings are in Colchester. So we have um, five board meetings a year that are in person. We have two away days a year. There will be other ad hoc meetings during the year that they will need to be in Colchester for. Um, but no, they don't have to live in Colchester. They just have to be you know, willing and wanting to get to know Colchester and to be there for meetings and some in-person events. I mean, some of our committees are still um, online okay. and I anticipate that will continue. Uh, mm -hmm. Board meetings tend to be in person, though, and certainly away days are in person. So commitment to Colchester, willing to attend uh, meetings and, and events in Colchester, but they don't have to live there. And do they need housing experience? Karen, you said it'd be great if they had that passion for housing. Do they need to have worked in the housing sector? I don't believe so. So we've got, as I say, we've got a real mix on our on our board and of our non-execs. We've got somebody with a council background, somebody who is a housing specialist myself who came in with no experience at all of the housing sector 
albeit I do work in my day job in a regulated sector. So I work in the energy sector. So I have that mm. understanding of a regulated industry. But no, that's not. I think the passion is more important and you can pick up the rest with our uh, excellently skilled exec team. Brilliant. Um, and when you look at the diversity of the board at the moment, what's the mix on the board like? And are there any areas of representation and when you think about your tenants mix, any areas that you'd love to represent better um, with this new candidate, perhaps? Shall I pick that up, Karen? I mean, we, we have a diverse group in as much that the um, the male-female ratio is, is, is good um, and slightly more female than male. Um, beyond them, we're, we're probably the average age is in the 40s, I would say. So we're not one of the older boards. We're somewhere probably... Uh, in the medium range from an age point of view. Uh, from a diversity, from a, a black Asian minority ethnic perspective, um, we're underrepresented there. I mean, Colchester as a whole, uh, the population is, is probably about 8% from a BAME background, 5% uh, of our tenants are. So obviously um, that uh, we're underrepresented in that respect at the moment. But broadly speaking, you know, we have a... Um, a good mix on the board, diversity of thought, as well as, you know, male, female, and some age as well. But um, I don't think we have anyone very young, but we do have a, a, a breadth there within the existing board membership, sorry. Okay. And we have, we have done some work on skills as well, skills based in, within the uh, our board membership as well. So there's an element of complementing the skills that we've got within the board as well, which would be um, useful. It sounds like you've got a really good mix. And I guess by nature of the fact that you've got exec there, tenants there, councillors there and the independents, that kind of makes sure that you've also got quite a mix across um, in, in terms of diversity of thought around the table. I imagine that feels quite healthy. Yeah, definitely. And it is. I mean, the, the whole sort of um, atmosphere at board meetings is really positive, upbeat, you know, lots of important discussions, important decisions being made, but all sort of working with the same aim, Sarah. So that sort of bringing the thoughts to the table, bringing that experience to the table, um, which might be different from some of the experiences we've got at the moment, you know, that's what we need to keep us moving forward as an organisation. So, you know, we've got a very good skills-based board, very able, and it's a really constructive, positive environment to be working in. But, you know, we're always looking for, for new, new experience, new energy to come to the board. Mm. But at the moment, we're also very fortunate with the members we've got. Brilliant. I think we're relatively informal in our approach. We, we you know, it's quite it feels quite a fun and positive environment, but we do take our role seriously. We obviously we're there for an important government purpose. So we do give the exec some good challenge, but it's um it's not a stuffy environment. Yeah, I'm getting that vibe. That's great, Karen. And um, and in terms of the time commitment and when when and where you have your meetings, can you give us a sense of that, Karen? Yeah, so we've all got day jobs on the board pretty much um and with the councillors some of them have got day jobs as well as being a councillor as well as being a board member so they're, wow. they're very busy uh so our meetings tend to be early evenings so typically a board meeting would start at five and um committee meetings also that same sort of time of day as chair there would be an occasional daytime meeting through the year um perhaps to the you know, where you're meeting with the um, council officers, so there might be an occasional call for an hour or so during the daytime. Um, but uh, I, I've been vice chair on the board and I've managed to accommodate that around my existing working diary. And Karen, can you give us a sense, like physically, where are the board meetings? OK, so at the moment, our um, CBH's offices are being refurbished. So it's been quite nice because it's given us an excuse to get out and about around the uh, our, around Colchester. So sometimes we have our board meetings in the community centre on Grinstead, which is one of our uh, housing estates. And other times we've been meeting a lovely facility on the Essex University site, uh, the innovation centre there. So uh, in and around the Colchester area, we've even actually had a board meeting in one of our sheltered housing um, homes at one point. So the, okay. the residents could come and listen in if they wanted to. So yeah, we've been out and about with the board meetings, which is quite nice to do. That's brilliant. And Philip, you mentioned before there's a cafe. It's the cafe in the community centre. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent um, cake. <laughs> we go to some great places, to be fair, Sarah. So Kelly's Cafe on Grinstead Estates, part of the community centre, where we've had breakfast with the board and quite a bit of cake, which is lovely. We've actually <laughs> had a board meeting in the castle, Karen, haven't we? Oh, yes, you we know, did. We, we, 
I mean, it's a wonderful place. There's so many different places in Colchester where we meet and, uh, you know, that's an element of fun. But, you know, as Karen said, we have some important business to do, but we have fun at the same time. Mm. And it keeps you close to your mission when you actually get to see Colchester as you as you operate as a board. Definitely. Why do you know, being in the castle in the evening, though, for a meeting? <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Um, so if anyone's interested in the role, um, can they reach out to you, Philip? Yep, definitely. So my details are on the recruitment pack uh, or you can download it from our website as well. So please, if anyone's interested, if they've got any questions, then contact me. I'm happy to have a call with them or exchange some emails. So, yeah, please do get in touch. And you shared that uh, any any candidates that are shortlisted be able to to join and see one of the board meetings in action. We have a board meeting uh, on the 1st of March and uh, the intention is to invite shortlisted candidates to join us before the board meeting and to observe the board meeting as well so that they can get to know us as well as us getting to know them. Um, so it's very much a, an open process, the, uh, the recruitment. So, yeah, exciting stages ahead, but 1st of March board meeting. Thank you so much. So Philip, Karen, thank you for your time. And for anyone watching this, you know, please do reach out to Philip. Um, we're advertising the role on Dynamic Boards. You can see it on their website as well. Uh, you've got the email address to call it, contact Philip directly and, uh, and ask for a chat if you've got any questions about the role. I hope this has given you a really good sense of the organisation and of what they're looking for as well. And, and I must say that's come across as your culture sounds absolutely fantastic and um, really open, really welcoming um, and and fantastic input from all of your different stakeholders around the table. I think that sounds like a really interesting board to work in. Um, so thank you for your time and, and any last comments, Philip or Karen, uh, to candidates who might be considering applying for the role? Well, this is a really exciting time to join Colchester Borough Home. So if you're interested, then please put an application in. We'd love to hear from you. And I'd, I'd add it's a, it's a great team to be part of um, and a successful team as well. They CPH are delivering really good results and that's evident in our benchmarking that we have done externally. And you can see that in the strategic report uh, when you give it a read. Um, so thank you very much, everyone, and good luck with your applications.